Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com and I want to show you how to install a basement subfloor system. The system we're installing today is uh, made out of basically two components placed together and they're in approximately two foot square panels with a tongue and groove system to lock it all together. So we've got the OSB top side so when it's sitting on the floor you're going to have the uh, OSB to the top and then it's got a plastic uh, base on the bottom with these these little uh, raised portions that just give it a little bit of breathing room off the concrete. So the idea is uh, if you've got a, a bit of a damper basement you can put this down and this this raised area will will give you just a little bit of space underneath it so that uh, your, your, your concrete can breathe a little bit and hopefully get a better chance to dry out uh, and and with that being plastic on the bottom as well, there's really no uh, food source down there for mold to start growing. So, so uh, in this case, we've got a, a damp basement. Uh, we've pulled all the flooring out and uh, are, are going to install this subfloor down before we build our, our interior walls. You can, can install it before or after the walls. It was just easier in this case to do it after, or sorry, before. You don't need a lot of special uh, tools to do this. Um, Basically, you're going to need a few, few little wood spacers that we need to use along the walls and any other objects. Uh, you want to have about a, a quarter inch space between any obstructions. So I've just got some miscellaneous pieces here to work with. Um, these floorings as well, when you purchase them, you can buy uh, shim kits. So it's just uh, a bunch of plastic pieces that you can stack and uh, put underneath if you need to take out a little bit of uh, you know, a low spot or whatever in a floor. So it would be stuck under there. So as we uh, get going in this, um, I'm sure we'll come across a spot or two where we'll have to use those. Uh, and then uh, basic, basic tools, we're gonna use some safety glasses. Uh, we just need a hammer. Uh, I've also uh, grabbed this uh, pry bar that I use for laminate flooring. And we may need it just to help lock some pieces in. I'm not sure. Uh, and then the other item is just a scrap piece of, uh, of wood to use against the edge of the panels. And then you hit it with the hammer to slide the tongue and groove system together. And this is just uh, so you aren't banging up the edge of the panel and, and damaging it. So, so you know, there's not, uh, like I said, not, nothing real special that you need. Most of the stuff you're going to all have right in, your, right in your home already. So, so uh, when you go to figure this out, uh, if you're using this this type of system with these two by two panels, they're slightly actually under. I think they, the surface area actually measures uh, 23 and a quarter, I think, inches square. Um, so you want to measure your room and uh, figure out, you know, how many panels you need. Um, they basically, for this particular product, they say to calculate each panel as being 3.3 uh, square feet. So if you get the square footage of the total area you're doing, divide it by 3.3, that should uh, give you the total number of panels you'll need. And that's allowing for waste and that. In most cases, that's more than plenty, but uh, you can always return the, the parts you don't have or that you don't use. So, so we're gonna get, uh, get started along this wall here. Before you start, obviously we did some demo we pulled up the carpet, the old underlay, that sort of stuff, and then vacuum the floor really well. So use your wet dry vac and uh, get rid of any dust or anything. The main thing is we don't want any contaminants underneath it. Uh, you know, the whole idea here is to have nothing down there for uh, mold to grow on. We've got a little bit of the, the uh, under pad from the carpet that was here that uh, we scraped uh, it off the best we could, but uh, there's still a little bit of that there. Um, generally, most of these under pads aren't really organic, so the, the mold isn't gonna eat it anyways, but uh, so you might notice when we get right down on the floor that there's a few little spots of that. Um, also, the floor that we've got here has some old glue residue on it from uh, some old tiles that used to be down here, I guess, at one time. Again, uh, none of that seems to be uh, spawning any mold that we can find, so it, I don't feel it's necessary to remove it. If you did have to remove it, uh, you're pretty much down to grinding the floor to get that off. Um, you could try using some thinners and strippers and things like that, but uh, you're just going to make a, 
real smelly mess, I think. So grinding it would probably be the best way if you, if you do have to get rid of something. If you do have some lumps and bumps, you want to work away at that and try to smooth that out. Or if you have some real dips, you can use some self-leveling uh, concrete in those to try to you know, pre-level things out. Uh, acclimatize your panels for about 24 hours um, in, the, in the room that you're going to be using them in. And uh, then you should be good to go. So we're going to reset the camera, get a few things out of the way here and start over here. Okay, so like uh, with most uh, other flooring or anything that I usually do, I try to start out along my longest wall if I can. It just gives you a nice uh, straight uh, distance to start out with. Um, the manufacturer of most of these panels actually usually recommends placing the, what would be the grooved side against your walls to start out with. Um, I have a bit of a problem with that because if I do that, even with the tapping block, I'm damaging this, this tongue here sticking out every time I want to tap it without being real careful about trying to get up on an edge or something. So I like to actually turn it the other way so that then when I'm putting the subsequent panels on and using my tapping block, I'm right against this solid edge and there's le way less chance I'm going to do any damage and I, I don't have to be real, real particular about exactly where the, the block is. So. So I'm going to turn it that way. I can't really see what difference it makes other than, you know, you might have a little bit more of a, a gap uh, here because of the, the tongue, but generally speaking, your flooring and your baseboard and everything else is, is going to cover that anyways. So if you foresee any problems doing it this direction, just install yours the other way. Okay, so I've got these uh, little spacers. Uh, my, these spacers are only eighth inch, so I'm doubling them up to give us our quarter inch uh, room that we need against the, this wall here, these two walls I should say. And then basically this will just push right in there. Now your room likely could be a little bit out of square or whatever so you might have to play with that a little bit and find a happy medium once you you know kind of get fitting everything together but uh, uh, you know try to start out with that quarter inch space. Uh, also because of the height of our drywall we've got a little bit of a play there too. We, we probably don't even really need that quarter inch space. Um, because we're gaining that under the drywall. We've got half an inch there. Uh, so anyways, get your first piece just kind of laying where you want it. Grab your second piece, slide the two together. Now before you really get it really forced into where you want to be, you want to try to get things kind of flushed up or, or real close so that when you uh, tap it into place, and it locks together, you don't have to beat the heck out of it, uh, lining everything completely right up. Okay, so we've got our second piece there. I'm just going to lay my tapping block on the floor and then use the hammer against there. It's kind of nice getting started here if you can put a little bit of weight on the first few pieces you've already done just to keep them from moving around on you. Okay, so tap it together. Do any little adjustments that you need kind of get things uh, flushed up like so. So that's our first piece and again like I said uh, because uh, when you start out you're going to have things eat, moving around so much easier just uh, keep track of what you've already done here for, for the first couple rows to make sure you aren't shifting anything too bad out of place. Um, if you really needed to you can use the odd uh, fastener through this, you know, drill with a hammer drill and fasten down into the concrete, but I wouldn't recommend getting too many. The idea is this needs to float a little bit and expand and contract uh, as it needs to. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. And I'm just going to continue on down this row and, and it's nice to just completely finish every row. So we'll go right to the other end of the room, uh, make our cut there with whatever space is left. Uh, if we've got a piece that's, you know, about six inches wider or more, we can use that piece down here to start the next row. Because we've got these joints right here, we, we want to make sure our next, each, each row after that staggers in those joints so that these don't line up from row to row. And it just gives a little more strength to the floor. So we'll see what we got down there. Uh, you don't want to use usually too much less than six inches of a piece uh, against the wall if you can, if you can help it. Something uh, to maybe check when you're doing your initial, before you start, 
measure your dimensions and just kind of estimate what you're going to have for a, an end row or for end row pieces. Uh, you know, like in this case, as we're moving across here, if I measured it out and that was going to be a two inch little piece over there, I probably would have cut, you know, five inches off of this first row against this wall. So that everything shifted over to make that piece bigger. But uh, in, in our case here, it works out pretty decent. So, uh, so I'm just going to move right along and keep putting these together. Just always pay attention to your tongue and groove so that you're orientating them the right way and don't have to take it apart. It's, it's not bad right in the beginning to take it apart, but uh, once you get a few together, it can be a real pain. So. All those spacers will get pulled out once we're completed. I can see this this corner is a little out of square so it's giving a little trouble with those shims down there but you just got to play with it. Okay so we'll uh, we'll just move the camera and I'll just finish this row off. Okay, so uh, as I've worked along here, and I don't think I really mentioned it before, when I'm putting the pieces down, I'm just looking that they're kind of sitting flat and they aren't, you know, rocking a whole lot. Uh, you're, it's never going to be perfect, but uh, if you can get some of that, you know, the little dips out of there with these shims, it's best. So I've got a little bit of a low corner here. These shims are designed, they just kind of stack together to... Uh, you know, make up whatever thickness you kind of need. So I'm just going to uh, see what kind of fits under there. And see how that, uh, yeah, you can see how that took the, the rock out of there. Now it wasn't much, but uh, it will help so that when people are walking in here, you know, and they're not going to have those little uh, soft spots. It's going to feel like a soft spot sort of thing. So once you get the shim in, just keep continuing on. Okay, so uh, now that we've got right down to the end, and you've seen me along there putting the odd shim in once I got to this end, uh, it was a little less, less uh, level. Or true so uh, I've got to the end now now I can make a measurement here you know to the wall in a couple places see if it's even in this case it's 18 inches but remember you want to take a quarter inch at least off of there and uh, once we get that piece cut um, you know you're gonna have to kind of tip it in a little bit because you need to get it started in here you may even have to pull this one up a little bit just to help get it in there um, I'm gonna allow actually just a little bit extra room here so I'm going to go probably uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch just to give myself that little bit more uh, extra room to get that in. So that measured 18 inches tight. So uh, I'll just de deduct my uh, um, 3 sixteenths from that and cut my piece. You can cut this on a table saw, with a jigsaw, with a, with a circular saw, anything like that. And I recommend that you cut somewhere else. You don't want to cut in this room because you're going to be constantly cleaning up that sawdust uh, as you're working so in this case we're going to be cutting right outside or right out in the shop so okay so I'm going to cut that piece uh, so 18 yeah so actually that's going to give us a decent enough piece to start that other end so uh, I'm just going to go and cut this right now there's no real rocket science to that we're going to show you some cutting uh, later on we've got to cut around a, uh, a piece of wall that's out here in the middle so uh, I'm going to go cut this quick piece here and uh, bring it back in and put it in. Okay, so I've got my uh, piece cut here to width. So we'll just uh, try to get the two together. I think earlier I said I was cutting off 3 16ths. I meant 5 16ths in my case. 
And I actually didn't have to lift up this one. I thought I may have to. You can see I've just got enough room there and I've got it in here and started. And uh, if I give this a little bit of a wiggle, hopefully I can get it started in enough to use my little bar, uh, use my little red bar. There's not quite enough room against the wall, so I'm just going to hopefully pry it over a little with that. Okay, so I've got that. And then what this bar will do is I, it allows me to hook in there and hit my hammer on here to close up this joint. So you can see the joint still open a little bit. Like so. And actually we're, we're flush there. Let's see how we are for... Okay, so we looks like we got a little bit of high spot back there. So this corner is a little uh, floating a little bit. So we're gonna need a shim here. Yeah, that's better. So we should be all right. And uh, I need my spacers in here. Okay, so I'm just, uh, now that I got the first row done, what I like to do is go back and just look at it, make sure everything stayed where I left it and uh, nothing shifted out of place as far as at these joints. Everything stayed nice and flush there. Make sure it's back against my shims. Uh, now if that wall's a little crooked or bowed or anything, then uh, you know I might have to stick the odd shim, extra shim in where there's a space because I want this to stay straight, so. So we'll probably uh, reposition the camera again. We've got our piece that came off of there when I cut it. It's a little under six inches. I think it's five and a half or something. Yeah, but uh, that'll be wide enough. We'll use it to start our next row. Okay, so we can use our, uh, our cut off, like I mentioned before, to start out this next row. So we just want to get it started in there. Tap it into place. So get it about a quarter inch from the wall and then our next piece goes in. When you're using these, these shims underneath, um, where was it? Somewhere here. You can see I've got a little bit of, little bit of movement there. Uh, one thing you got to play with a little bit, if you put a shim in because you think you got too much movement, just check further away because if it just made, you know, lifted up too high and there's movement somewhere else, then you really don't need that shim. So. You know, just make sure you check around that area after you've shimmed it to be sure it isn't just lifting the floor up and creating another problem. So, so that little bit of movement there, like I said, you're going to have some sometimes. So you just got to play with that a little bit as you go and uh, decide what's the best, uh, best situation for, or the best amount of play, least amount of play for the situation you have. So, okay. So now uh, this row, like I said before, we're just trying to stagger these joints off by about at least six inches. So uh, uh, just put these panels in just like we were doing all the other ones, except this time I'm not just locking into here. I'm also having to lock it into there. Oops, that's the wrong direction. Pay attention to what direction you're putting them. So if you just kind of get it started in both, if you can, and then uh, you'll have to use your tapping block in uh, two, a couple different directions to uh, get that in there. I'm just trying to get this shim in there so that doesn't move on us. So just smack it around till you get things uh, uh, fitting the way you want it and then move on. Okay, I can see uh, as I'm moving along here, um, I'm putting this piece in, 
I'm actually opening these joints up just a bit. A little bit isn't a big deal, but I think part of the problem is where I've got my wall spacers, I maybe will move them to where the joints are because uh, where they are now, it's allowing that joint to flex as I'm hitting this next row against it. So uh, I'm just gonna shift all those down a little bit so they're all right on a joint. And that should uh, keep me from having that problem anymore. Okay, so we're just gonna insert a couple different uh, situations where we've gotta cut around some obstacles and uh, you know how to kind of measure it. So, so right here, we've got a transition where there's gonna be a little bit of a jog back here to the existing carpet. So, I just want to get my piece real close. I'm not, I don't really have it stuck right in there, but it's, it's lined up. And what's that giving me for a space between there? We've actually got a quarter inch space there. So that'll actually uh, affect this measurement over here. So if I just come straight off this wall, you know, this is the obstacle I'm cutting around. That's where the wall is. But now I have to remember that that piece is gonna slide a quarter inch that way, plus I want a quarter inch of play here. So I actually need to move this over one half inch. So we'll just mark a line. I'm gonna scribble that one out so I don't cut the wrong one. Okay, so that's that line there. Now, the whole thing needs to slide over to whatever point we decided we wanted here. Uh, for me, I want this to go over from my tongue there. I want it to go over two and a, well, two and a half inches. So, actually I should have started out with this against the wall where I wanted it. That's gonna change that, two and a quarter inches. Okay, so I'll measure along here, two and a quarter. And we're actually cutting out this piece here so that this can slide right over. Okay, so we've got that all measured out around there. We'll simply cut that out with a circular saw and then we'll be able to slide that over and uh, it should fit perfectly where we want it. Uh, you might be, just since we're right here, you might be wondering, you know, what I'm gonna do with this difference in uh, elevation here. Well, actually this, these panels, this particular type of panel is seven eighths of an inch thick. So it's gonna raise your existing floor up we don't have that panel over in this other room. So there's gonna be a transition between the two. On top of here, we're going with a uh, laminate vinyl plank, or sorry, a vinyl plank uh, flooring. So it's quite thin, I think it's four or five or six mils or something like that going right on here. So this will end up being slightly higher than this carpet edge by probably oh, an eighth of an inch likely, maybe even a quarter of an inch. So along here, I'll end up using a, uh, uh, carpet bevel bar. So it's just a flat piece of metal that gets uh, fastened down here through the concrete and it just makes that transition kind of a bit of an angled transition from the carpet surface up to the top of the, the vinyl plank that we're using. So, so your situation could be different. You could be putting carpet on here and carpet over there, whatever. You just got to use a transition strip there to, to make up that difference. So, Okay, so we've got this one. We'll cut it and put it in after, but I want to show you one other cut as well. Okay, so we've uh, worked our way uh, across the better part of this room and now we've come to an obstacle here. Uh, so we've got an existing, uh, par partial existing wall and a, and a door frame. So we've got to cut the next panel around it. But before I could do that, what I did was uh, cut the uh, trim and door jam off. So I just used a scrap piece of the same flooring, subfloor and I uh, just set it on the floor and used this uh, orbital saw to uh, cut that, actually oscillating saw, sorry. And uh, cut that off so that the new floor, we can just get it slid right underneath there and it'll be a much nicer fit. So now we need to figure out how to cut this. You might have a similar situation where you've got possibly a telepost in the way or something like that. And it might even end up that that post, you know, is out in the middle of the sheet. So. What I would do in a case like that is I would, you know, measure it all out, cut that hole, and then run the uh, piece of flooring actually through your table saw so that it is in two pieces. That way you can kind of put one in and slide the other one in from the other side. So in this case, this isn't completely encompassed in this piece. So uh, we've got to basically cut a notch out over here on this side 
So it's going to be a lot uh, quite similar to what we did at the other on that last cut. Just getting myself lined up and close to the wall or the obstacle. And uh, what I want to do is just get basically a bit of a line here just as a guide to start out with. Just because I can't get right in underneath there where I want to be, so I'll, I'll readjust that line afterwards. I know I've got to be away from this a little bit. So that'll be my actual line there. And I've got a little leeway in this case too because uh, there'll be another wall butting in here. So there'll be actually half inch drywall hanging off here so I can afford to be just a little bigger that way as well. Okay, so on this, on this first line I did here, I'm just gonna measure from this face back to the framing. And I've got an inch. And remember we want a, qu a quarter inch of space. So I'll, I'll just move this line back three quarters of an inch. So that's going to be there. Now I've got this kind of sitting on there. I'll just measure what the difference is on the overlap here and that's how far I need to come in there. Uh, looks like about four and three eighths. Plus I need that extra quarter so we'll go four and five eighths. Now obviously these measurements really don't mean anything probably to your project but I'm just trying to talk you through what my reasoning is. Okay, so now I can move this away. I'll move this line over. So that's my cut line. I don't need that one anymore. And I'm gonna do that, that there. So I'll just get a pencil line on there. Okay, so I don't know if you can see the pencil lines, but I'm basically getting rid of a rectangular shape right there. Now this one will be a little tricky. Again, we need to kind of slide it underneath there and then get it lined up with the tongues on, on the other pieces, or with the grooves I should say, and then uh, pound it into place. So I'm gonna go uh, cut this one out, uh, probably uh, with the, using a circular saw and the jigsaw would probably be the best on here. And then we'll bring it back and put it in place. Okay, so we've just come out here to the shop and we're gonna cut uh, this little piece out that we just marked. So the first, cut I'm going to make is with the circular saw and I'll just plunge in and make that cut along the line there. Okay, so that's one of the cuts. And I could have used that really for this too, but I'm going to use the jigsaw for these guys. So that's that cut and then I'll just show you while we're in here uh, basic cut on the table saw just a straight cut for one of those end pieces so I've got the fence already set. This right here is the piece that I wanted. Okay, so we can take those back in and uh, hopefully everything fits right. Okay, so uh, we're back inside. We've got our piece here. So again, like I said, this one will be a little trickier because we've got to get actually underneath here. Uh, so with any luck at all, once I get things lined up, it might fit. Okay, so that drops down in there. If I can get all those to start in, which it looks like they're going to. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm probably, well, I definitely am bigger here than I need to be, but uh, with our flooring and stuff, that's gonna cover that, so we should be okay, but uh, I probably could have been, well, that had to drop in though. I, I probably still could have had this about an eighth inch smaller and this tongue still would have got past and in, but uh, it's gonna be all right. Like I said, there's, a, there's gonna be a, a wall actually going across here, forming a bit of a hallway, so uh, that, that'll that be fine. Okay, so we got that in there. We seem pretty solid. I might need a shim back there when I move around to the other side, but uh, we'll deal with that at another point. So that just gives you a bit of an idea cutting around an obstacle. We're gonna go back to this end so we can get the last little bit in and show you just finishing the uh, up against the second wall there, and then we'll be able to wrap things up. Okay, so I've just measured and cut uh, a couple pieces, three pieces here to finish off against the wall. Uh, so once you're, you've worked your way across the room, it's much like we had to do at the end there. You just got to cut your piece so it'll fit in there. Get it wiggled into position. And that's where this bar comes in handy again. This system will give you a little bit of a warmer floor as well, at least they claim that, and I, I would think it should be somewhat warmer because you're getting isolated a little bit up off the concrete. So. Okay, so just uh, fit all your last pieces in there. Don't forget, make sure you leave yourself that quarter inch uh, space there. I'll pop this last one in and then uh, we'll do our wrap up. So I hope you found our subflooring in a basement video helpful. Uh, maybe you've got a renovation coming up in the basement, uh, whether you're renoing the whole thing or just doing a few rooms, changing the flooring or something. This is a, a possibility for you to be thinking about to uh, kind of help you with a damp floor or uh, help you with uh, possibly warming the floor up just a little bit. So we tried to give you as many tips and hints along the way as we could to help uh, speed up your process, your learning curve when you do your project and uh, hopefully it was uh, helpful. If we missed something or you're not sure of something or maybe you got a question about another project you got going on, you can always check us out on our forum and you'll find that at, uh, on our website at house-improvements.com. So you can go on the forum and post up whatever you want and I'll uh, get an answer off to you as, as quickly as I can. Uh, also, uh, if you're finding our videos helpful, you could also go to Patreon, which we have a link here in the bottom description. But uh, you could go to Patreon and uh, pledge, make us a pledge and uh, it just helps us out a little bit in producing these videos that you've come to hopefully enjoy. So uh, besides that, if you aren't already sick of me after all that, then you can follow us as well on Facebook and Twitter and uh, just see what we have to say uh, every day during the week. I try to make a post on each one of those. So, so anyways, I hope that it was uh, worth watching today and uh, thanks, thanks again.